Well, good morning and welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder, and this is BRN Weekly for Saturday, March 7th, 2020. And our top story today, gauging investor reaction to all this market volatility. And joining me now is Judith Ward. She's a certified financial planner with T. Rowe Price Associates based in Owings Mills, Maryland. Judy, thanks so much for joining us on the program today. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you, and thanks for making yourself available this morning. So let's just jump right in. We've had a lot of market volatility and probably scaring a lot of investors, but I know you have your pulse on what is being said both at the call center and in your interactions with investors. So let's start with the call center, uh, 401k investors, retail investors, people calling in. What can you tell us about what's going on with, with those conversations? Sure. And, you know, the, the headlines are really scary right now. And there has been, you know, an elevated volume of calls. And what we're finding, though, is that we, I think a lot of times people just want reassurance and they want to see what's actually happening in their particular account. Mm -hmm. um, and we're able to remind people about investing for the long term, you know, especially if they're decades away from retirement. Yeah. Um, actually, this is a good time to be continuing to contribute to your account because you're buying shares at lower prices. And so just having that conversation and being able to uh, reassure our investors has just been very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And and I, I'm old enough to remember the 2008 financial crisis, which I think has shaped a lot of people's, uh, you know, just reactions and thoughts about that. But I also remember the bull market of the 1990s, the late 90s and the tech boom. And you know, Judy, uh, I remember kind of how things went down south, but I think it's important, as I think you're you're stating, that to remind people that the markets go up, markets go down, and to have that long term vision and perspective really helps helps kind of get you through these difficult times. Yeah, the other thing I would add is, you know, one of the things I like to say is what what's happening in the headlines may not be what's happening in your account, and especially yeah. if you have people that are are not totally in the stock market, like maybe those that are closer to retirement that have more of a balanced approach, you know, their account balances aren't suffering um, like they might hear uh, what's going on in the headlines. So again, just, we also see a lot of people checking in um, digital, you know, visiting the website, like looking at their account and, mm -hmm. and then they realize that, you know, maybe their account balances aren't dropping as much as what they're hearing. Um, happening in the market. So I think it's twofold, just checking in on their particular situation, checking in on their balances, whether it's online or calling an associate just to get that validation. Now we do have some people that we just, you know, they just feel better that they they want to move to cash and we can accommodate that. But I think yeah. being have that conversation with them first just really helps. Yeah, absolutely. I think it does help as well. And I think maybe turning off the television or t putting down the device also, because I mean, we live in this, this society where we're just bombarded by news. And uh, you know, that, that green red that we often see on the television programs, right? Green, green means markets going up, red means the market go down. And we're kind of like conditioned to, we've, we've seen a lot of green, right? I mean, we've seen a lot of green, even, even though we've had some market volatility last year and we're kind of conditioned when things go red, people just kind of kind of freak out. So I think it's important just to turn off some of those headlines, take that out of the equation and begin to th that calming process and think about how, how to take, a, take that longer term view. Right. And we're also able to help people understand that, you know, these, these things do happen, you know, and this was one of those, um, you know, we didn't see this coming. And so this is in the, you know, as you know, the market doesn't um, like uncertainty and no. we're in that space right now where there's a lot of uncertainty going on. Um, but just to kind of put some of this in perspective, I mean, we, you know, we manage 401k plans. And so when those uh, participants in those plans, um, we have found like last week, uh, you know, for over 2 million um, people that are in the 401k plans, you know, only 1% took any action whatsoever. So 99%, you know, of the 2 million people that we help in their 401k plans, didn't take any action. And even the action that we did um, see that they took 
only half was from like stocks into bonds or money market. There mm -hmm. was also a quarter of the transactions went the other way. They went from bonds and money market into stocks. So I think, you know, some people are actually viewing this as a buying opportunity as well. Yeah, that's certainly positive. And, and I guess kind of go to get some of the other reporting that uh, at least I've seen on this, where you've had lots of people trading and going into fixed income or going into the stable value option. Judy, a lot of uh, people are investing now in target date funds. Um, and I think this is probably the reason why people invest in the target date funds, right? They want to, and that's no disrespect to people who are financial planners, people who are doing and helping, you know, advisors, helping people buy individual securities or individual funds. But a lot of people, they're just like, I want to set it and forget it. I want people to do it for me. And the whole purpose around these target date funds is to have an asset allocation by a professional manager that he or she and the team can come up with to help mitigate some of these risks. Yeah, absolutely. And the target date funds are by nature already diversified in a, an asset allocation that is um, appropriate for, you know, based on someone's age or when they expect to retire, hence the target date, um, if you will. And we do see actually that uh, investors who are in target date funds actually react less than investors who aren't. Um, which is really an interesting um, statistic that we see. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, um, again, getting back to, you know, the headlines and, you know, it's all about the stock market. And when you're in a target date fund, you're diversified. And so you're in other markets, you may have bonds as well. And we actually had uh, someone who did call in that was in a target date fund. And when they looked at their own personal account, again, versus what they're hearing in the headlines, it was very reassuring to them. Yeah, I would imagine so. And sometimes people just need, and I, I think, you know, you mentioned te technology, people logging into the website, but I do think that a reassurance uh, from the, a human voice or a person when they walk into an investor center, um, I think that goes a long way. And a lot of people just want to be heard, Judy. I mean, you know, I know I do, and I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm as technological as they come, but I prefer to really interact one-on-one -on -one with a person who's to say, you know what? This is what I do every day of the week, all the time. And I can tell you that I think you're going to be OK. And I, I know that there are some investment guidance versus investment advice kind of restrictions there. But I think overall, the human interaction really helps. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And um, also, I think at during these times, people might feel like they need to do something. Um, and sometimes just being told that doing nothing is the right thing to actually do. I, I, again, I think it, it just helps people just feel better about their situation, um, maybe um, hold in there for a little longer and, you know, and call back. And, and the thing is, we can also say, look, you're not the only one. You know, we talk to people all the time that are in the same kinds of situations and we're telling people the same kinds of, you know, guidelines. You know, if you're far away from retirement, you've got the time to ride through this. You should actually be continuing to contribute because you are buying in the down market. And if you're closer to retirement, you probably have a mix of bonds um, as well. So you're not feeling, you're not, I, I guess, suffering as much as what you might um, think, you know, again, hearing and looking at the headlines in the markets. Yeah, well stated. Well, Judy, always a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks so much for making time this morning to come on the program and uh, look forward to speaking to you uh, later on in the months and weeks to come to find out how everything kind of settles out. Yep. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me, Jeff. We appreciate it. Thanks, Judy. And when we come back, it's not easy being green. And we'll take a look at a new educational program around retirement income planning. So stay tuned right here on BRN Weekly. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? 
especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. The windows on our homes, they protect us in the ones we love, but they do much more. At Renewal by Anderson, making your home more comfortable is at the center of every window we make. It's why we custom build our windows in America and install them in as little as one day. It's why we build our frames with exclusive Fibrex composite material that's two times stronger than vinyl. It's why our glass helps keep your home warmer in winter, cooler in summer, and quieter all year long. It's why we stand behind every window with a 20-year limited warranty. Why not help lower your energy costs while giving your home and family the best? Call 1-800-835-6525 to schedule a free in-home consultation. Buy one, get one at 40% off with this special offer. Plus, get special financing with no money down, no monthly payments, and no interest for one full year. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Call 1-800-835-6525 now. Welcome back. In our This Week in Finance segment, I sat down with Devin Banerjee to discuss the SEC's interest in ESG funds. Let's take a look. Lots of news this week, Jeff, but I did want to touch on this ESG topic because it's something you and I and the market has been talking so much about over the past few years. Now about $140 billion in uh, under management across ESG uh, ETFs, uh, growing about 20% annually over the past couple of years. And finally, on Monday this past week, the SEC came out and said, look, we're seeing all of these funds with uh, ESG in the, in the title or environmental or social or governance in the title of these funds, it's time to evaluate whether they're actually investing uh, behind uh, e you know, ESG themes. And so it started a uh, public comment period, which is sort of the beginning of the rulemaking process for uh, the SEC, the, the, the US regulatory agency. And, and it's basically asking people, do they believe uh, ESG products should follow existing product, existing rules, to be honest, for, for other mutual funds and ETFs that require them to uh, to, to invest um, broadly behind what their names suggest. So for example, you know, if a fund has the word stock in it, that fund is required to invest, you know, broadly at least 80% typically in equities, uh, which makes sense, you know, it's so it's so it's preventing false advertising, false marketing, for example. And I, I think this is a real interesting moment in the evolution of ESG because, as I said at the top of the segment, there's been so much talk, and um, there's also been this this danger of what people call greenwashing, where there's so much interest in in allocating to ESG products among asset owners, pools of capital, that there may be some fund managers who are creating products that are pretty similar to existing products, mm -hmm. but uh, have ESG in the title or in the name, just as kind of um, an asset grab. Uh, strategy. So I, I think a big moment in the evolution here, and I think we're going to start seeing people encouraged to develop metrics more uh, uh, more carefully, uh, ESG data points, so that these things can start being measured. But look, you know, regulation spurs a lot of uh, controversy and very strong beliefs on different ends of the spectrum. But when you're talking about the name of a product and whether it's matching what that product does, I think the majority of people, you know, would get on board with something like that. And we're seeing that in the conversation on the platform. You, you know, one LinkedIn member came out and said, look, defining ESG should come first. You know, people don't even agree on what an ESG strategy actually is. Um, you know, there, there was a lot of great conversation on the LinkedIn platform about this. People saying, should, should rating agencies get involved? Uh, or should this just be a, a, you know, compliance with a set of predetermined standards? Or is this about screening, you know, negative screening that limits the universe of uh, in the security selection process? Or should it be a focus on impact investing? Or should it be 
funds that actually proactively engage with portfolio companies in which they're investing to help them progress along ESG issues? Should it be all of the above? Should it be none of the above? And so it's starting this really actual fruitful, substantive conversation around the definition of ESG and what metrics should be uh, in place to, to measure these things. I mean, that's a conversation that people have been having for a long time, which is everyone's coming up with their own metrics. And so maybe finally there'll be some standardization. And look, I was talking to a fund manager just a couple of weeks ago, uh, Bonnie wong Cool. She's, she's actually the head of ESG investments. It's a title that Western Asset Management, the big $500 billion fixed income manager has given her, which says a lot about the industry, by the way, that there are now people with that title at big uh, asset managers. But what she was saying was exactly along your point, which is, you know, standardization sounds great, but maybe it's not also great. It's actually a source of, of alpha for some of these asset managers pursuing ESG strategies where they have the, the um, analytical resources and they have access to management and, and they can kind of figure out, you know, uh, their own approach to executing on an ESG strategy. So there's going to be a lot of push and pull, but I think this is the start of a really important conversation. And yes, uh, you know, even though there's going to be some, as I said, push and pull, it signifies, I think, that ESG has really come to the to the fore and is now top of mind for, you know, asset owners, fund managers, and now regulators. So it kind of says something about the maturation um, of ESG. I think where people are starting to talk about standardization is not actually at the fund manager level in terms of performance reporting and, you know, performance attribution, but in the portfolio companies or, or the issuers in a fixed income strategy. So for them to talk about, you know, uh, environmental, uh, you know, emissions and, 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 and other things, for, for them to kind of have a standardized just uh, data points that you report, you know, is it parts per million or is it, you know, this metric or that metric? Um, and, and so I think that's where the conversation's starting. But I, 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 I do kind of agree with you. Everyone's going to have their own preferred metrics. So there's going to be a lot of this uh, back and forth. And on Thursday, I sat down with NBC Today Show's financial editor, Gene Chatsky, to talk about a new retirement income planning tool offered by the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Let's take a look. Important it is. Well, not only is it important, but what's scary is that many, many people don't know where they stand in terms of how much money, A, they'll need for retirement, and B, they'll actually have for retirement. So let's just sort of set the landscape here. People know that they can expect Social Security. That will cover about 40% of your pre-retirement income for most people. These are averages. It, interestingly, the less money you earn, the more Social Security will actually replace. It's people who are earning low to mid six figures that we're very worried about because Social Security will not replace a decent chunk of their income and many have not strategized to figure out if the 401ks, the other retirement accounts that they've pulled together on their own will cover the rest. Um, and, and we know that pensions have basically evaporated in this country. About 17% of people are lucky enough to have one, but you can't really count on that either. I spent the bulk of my career at personal finance magazines and it was all accumulate 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 and what we only started to talk about as the baby boomers entered retirement was the fact that decumulation figuring out how to make your money last as long as you do with a withdrawal strategy that makes some sense is um, equally as important. And the metric that people relied upon for a very long time, that 4% rule, showed that it's not always the best, at least in terms of market, um, in t at times of market turmoil, right? Yeah. If you get hit by a 2009 market, um, 2008 market, the, the year that you retire, um, you're going to have trouble making up for that if you're withdrawing at a rate of 4%. And so it's gotten people talking about this concept of lifetime income and that what seems to be making sense and what we're talking about when we're talking about MUG is making sure that you've got enough money when you take Social Security and when you take a chunk of 
your retirement stash and perhaps convert it to a lifetime paycheck, that it will cover the things that you really need. MUG stands for mortgage, utility, groceries. Those are the top line needs as identified in a survey by the Alliance. But very closely on the heels of that comes healthcare, transportation, and the cell phone that you can't put down. And so (laughs) making sure that you've got enough to cover those things, I think is a really, really smart move. And then nobody's suggesting that you take your entire retirement stash and annuitize it, at least not at today's interest rates. That would that would kill your shot at growth. You want to make sure that you've got a decent chunk still invested so that it can keep pace with taxes and inflation and keep growing for you. I think it's about a couple of things. I think the industry is working on reframing the products so that they're easier to understand. Um, but I also think it's it's on the consumer's point of view, understanding there's a landscape here. And, and I am a fan of the simpler, the better, right? Buy something that you that you truly understand, that you know what the payout is going to look like, where you know that you are going to get the money for as long as you live. And and don't venture into the land of fees and complications that you don't understand because it's not necessary. Well, and I don't believe anybody should buy something that they don't understand, right? This is yeah. why we, we continue to ask questions even when we think we've asked that question already. If somebody's not giving me an answer that I can understand, you better believe I'm going to ask my question again. And I'll ask it of somebody else if I can't get an answer from the person that I'm talking to today. But I do also think that as the SECURE Act takes hold, and annuities start showing up as options in 401k plans. And as you start to see your balance in your retirement plan reflected as a lifetime paycheck, we're going to start to learn these things in a, in a faster, um, more comprehensive way. And that wraps up this episode of BRN Weekly. But we're not done for the week because tomorrow we're back again with members of the media, academia, and financial services to discuss all the issues related to retirement, markets, technology, personal finance, and so much more. Yep, it's our BRN Sunday podcast. You're not going to want to miss it. So until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Keep on saving and don't forget, roll with the changes. Attention, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services has officially authorized new benefits that Medicare Advantage plans may include. To get the benefits you deserve, you can call the Medicare Coverage Helpline. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. If you're on Medicare, this is important information. I called the Medicare Coverage Helpline and they instantly looked up my coverage. In this one simple call, they offered to enroll me in a plan that includes rides to medical appointments, private home aides, doctors and nurses visits by telephone, and even home delivered meals. The plan also includes dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, all at no additional cost. Don't delay. Call to see if the new benefits are available in your area. Call the number on your screen now. It's free. Call 1-800-757-1451. That's 1-800-757-1451.